town of 8,000 people, South Boston looks busy. That's because they're all heading to the Speedway. Race one of a twin bill was a thriller. So who knows what the k and Pro Series East has in store next. It's been a hot spring day in Virginia. Qualifying was held earlier in the day to set the field for the first 100 lapper, but it was marred by this lap 22 crash. It took out six cars while Tyler Ankrum sped away to his first Canaan Pro Series win. Others hauled out backup cars or watched and repaired as a teammate got the only backup car the organization had or with terminal damage and no backup car, simply packed up. Welcome everyone to race number two of the Who's Your Driver Twin 100s from the South Boston Speedway. Now, Parker, it's not all bad news. Everyone gets to see another race, so that's good, but it's been challenging. Well, definitely for the fans, it's more bang for your buck. But for the teams, they were able to go back, work on those race cars, actually tweak some things, maybe make adjustments, and also a new set of tires, and then go back through tech to get ready for race number two. Now, this track holds a full series of events during the year, including late model stock cars. They had a race in between on different rubber. What will that do? Well, it just definitely changes the track, so it's a bit of a guess for some of these crew chiefs about what adjustments they made in between the break between these two races. We'll see how the opening laps look for championship leader Tyler Ankrum. Tyler Dipple right behind him. And you see Ronnie Bassett Jr. in third now in the championship run. Right, and in sixth, Anthony Alfredo been really fast at times, was fast in the first race, but been, his season has been marred by Rex. That's right, the first two races of the year he did not finish. Now Vargas in the two car has had a good run. Ryan got the backup car that Rev Racing has. His other two teammates have had to repair. And that's because of a big crash early on while Grant Quinlan was on the pole and went out front. This happened with Anthony Alfredo. Yeah, he just gets loose under another car off of four, locks up in front of the field, and you can see Dylan Bassett right there so disappointed. Can't believe what just happened to his 44 car. Meanwhile, the 31 of Connor Hall and Spencer Davis get together. Then over and over, the 04 of Ronnie Bassett and Tyler Dipple make contact. Meanwhile, Dipple's teammate, Tyler Ankrum, went to victory lane in race number one. There Eric's in the Boneyard. Well, it's the beginning of race number two tonight at the South Boston Speedway. And right now I'm walking around the, the graveyard of all the offerings to the gods of speed, basically. I mean, these are all the parts that came off of the cars from the first race. You can see full bumper covers, bumper bars. You can see all the vent tubes that are there. Here's some more bumper bars and uh, some supports for the body work that go with these race cars to keep the bodies on them. And the crews were going to work through all of, the, uh, through all of that time. And cleared all this junk off to clear some new parts so they can get put on and we can get some new cars put together and get back out there and run the second race tonight. We got some cars that are running this race tonight looking a little bit hurt out there. They got some body damage and a few bumps and scrapes to them, but we're ready to go racing for another 100 laps at Sobo. Dave, Dave brings up a great point there about the challenges of doing twin races is that if you damage the car even a little bit, there's a lot of work for the crew to get it ready for the second race, which is why so many of the crews asked their drivers to take it easy in race one, and they definitely did not. Last year's second race featured a favorite son from South Boston. One year ago, it was a whole lot cooler here at the track. Chase Cabry out qualified them all. Chase Purdy in the 17 car, he was dominant. Led 77 out of 100 laps. But the turning point came when Ronnie Bassett Jr. clobbered the wall. And that led to a late race restart. And Chase Purdy, unfortunately, he jumped it. He gave it away. All part of Chase's 2017 learning experience. Meanwhile, this was the race for the lead. Even though Purdy comes to the checkered first, he gets the black. The checkers went to Harrison Burton. Burton's family very much associated with South Boston Speedway and was happy to bring the victory home to everyone who came to see him, including a whole bunch of people lined up on the backstretch whom he saluted. And you just got to know that made his whole family very proud. k and Pro Series Racing on NBCSN is brought to you by k and High Flow Air Filters and Air Intake Systems because everyone loves that fast car smell. South Boston Speedway has hosted stock car racing for more than 60 years. And tonight is the Who's Your Driver Twin 100 race number two getting ready to go. Interesting situation for Dylan Bassett in the 44 car. He wrecked this car in practice. They went to a backup, which became the primary for race one. Well, that one got destroyed. So they had to go back to this car 
to put it in the race park. A lot of work. That's a tremendous amount of work and some of the challenges we see with just racing two races. But you know what? The thing got to give them a lot of confidence is that was the car they came here thinking they wanted to race in both races. Now, here's how they line up the race. It was based on your fastest speed, single lap speed, in race number one. Anthony Alfredo in the 40, though he crashed out, caused that big wreck. He will be the pole sitter to his outside. Marcus Gomes had the second quickest time of anyone, any single lap in the first race. And actually talking to Marcos Gomes, crew chief Wayne Sederington, they actually made a lot of adjustments on that race car, trying to loosen it up, thinking that this track to get a lot tighter. Our Who to Watch driver is going to be coming from the back tonight. That's the black number 40 of Anthony Alfredo. They call him Fast Pasta. He hails from Richfield, Connecticut. He also finished second in the Cars Tour late model stock division point standings. So he has some understandings of this type of race car, just not the weight of them. In the first couple of races that he's run, he's been very impressive. He's had a couple of top 10 runs put together, but they're hoping to shake off some of their bad luck and have a great run here tonight in race number two at South Boston. Anthony ran for Junior Motorsports in the late model last year, now graduates to the K&N Pro Series with MDM Racing. I like his nickname, Fast Pasta. He's okay with it. I asked him. He's like, ah, yeah, I'm all right with it, as long as keep, people keep using my name, right? And it's fitting for this racetrack because this is a fast, short track, Dave. If we saw there in the first race, the bottom line is preferred groove, but that outside lane will come in, and we've seen it work on the restarts. So Alfredo to the rear. That will slide that left-hand column up, and Grant Quinlan will be on the inside of the front row, kind of like he was when he was the pole sitter for the first race. Yeah, he has experience with that. And back on row three, you've got the race winner from race one, Tyler Ankrum. Can he be patient and work his way to this field? Will they settle down, Parker? That's my big question here. I can only hope so. Otherwise, I don't <laughs> know if they'll have any cars to bring home after this. Race number one in the sunshine. The sun's gone down. Race number two under the lights. Quinlan and Gomes take it to green at South Boston. Great start there by Gomes. He's staying side by side with Quinlan off of turn two. Quinlan in race one was able to get a huge jump off of turn two, but not the case here. Of note, there were 17 cars in the lineup in race number one. 16 now, that's because Brandon McReynolds could not continue in his destroyed 74 car, didn't have a backup, so he is not in this one. And Spencer Davis there in that orange 82. We saw him spin out in race one, running up at the front. He looked a little loose going off into turn three. Hopefully they've gotten that car tightened up a little bit more in this race. Still very aggressive, though. To his outside, the 17 of Tyler Ankrum, race one winner. And Chase Cabry had a strong car for a few laps at the beginning. That got him that good starting spot. And they did some repairs. And wow, who's off the pace there? Looked like Ronnie Bassett Jr. there. Just got maybe a little too high. It looked like he got out in the dust and maybe a little bit of stuff on his tires. And now he seems to be going back up to speed. So 100 laps straight through unless there is a caution. No second set of tires is given or, or purchased by the team, so they've got to make it on this rubber. Had about an hour and 10 minutes between the last race to make repairs, get back through inspection, and show up for this second 100 lapper. Let's check in with Derek. We're keeping up with the progress of the number 55 of Marcus Gomez. The next gen driver is in that number 55 machine, the Brazilian born racer. It's the 2015 Brazilian stock car racer. We wish the best for him. It's it's an interesting, uh, and you would know, Parker, coming from road racing into oval racing. It's a huge transition and can be a lot of fun if you're running as well as he is. It's incredibly tough. I know he runs what they call stock cars down there in Brazil. I believe those cars are a lot lighter, actually, of a friend. Oh, we see these two going together there. Nelson P.K. Jr. might remember that name for running in the stock car ranks. He now runs in that series, and those cars are maybe a little bit different, but, you know, the fact is being in a tin top, as they say, is helpful, so he at least has a little <laughs> experience with fenders on his cars. So you saw the contact. It was the black 40 of Alfredo and the red and black 91 of Justin Carroll. Alfredo, Derek Report is starting at the rear in a backup car, Parker, that he hasn't raced. Did not practice that car here this weekend, and so he just jumped in it. How much faith does he have in that team? Well, a lot. You know, MDM is a very... Uh 
organized race team. They bring great race cars to the racetrack each week. So I've no doubt that that backup is as well prepared as their uh, primary. And they're one of the few teams that's in that situation. So mm -hmm. he, they had the option to, you know, to, to have a car get destroyed in the first race and feel very confident going into the second race. And he seemed confident. He had talked about after the first race wreck that he felt like that backup could be just as good as his primary. A little bit of a wheel lock there from somebody, either Ankrum or Dipple. You see the 55 being chased by the four of Chase Cabri. A little repair on his car. And there's Alfredo. Alfredo's up to eighth now already. Yeah, he's, he's definitely showing the speed in that 40 car. It's turning well through the center. He's right on the bottom, able to get the drive off. He drives away from 31 Connor Hall real easily there. I think that that car is really coming to him, and the team made the right adjustments for the nighttime. Remember, they didn't get to run a lot of laps in that race, so mm -hmm. it was a, a lot of guesswork for them on that 40 to know exactly what they wanted to do for this race. Just looking back at the four of Cabri, a lot of blue tape on that hood. And he ran so well here last year. There he is. So disappointed with how that race finished for him. Thought he had a car that could win. May have it here tonight, the way he's racing with Marcus Gomes. Uh, we saw in race one, Marcus Gomes had that left rear beat up a lot by almost every driver in the <laughs> field, and it looked like it was close there between himself and Cabri. And I think Cabri is a lot faster here. You know, he's be able to right, be right on the tail of Gomes. He's able to move around. You see him going a little higher, trying to get a run off the corner. Those are the signs that the car behind you is probably quicker and eventually most likely going to find a way past you or going to maybe use that chrome horn to get you out of the way. Oh, they just went by Cabri's teammate, Ruben Garcia Jr., that car still looks very hurt. It was heavily damaged in the first race and there was no additional backup for Garcia to use, so they had to repair it the best they could. It doesn't look good. Yeah, the uh, official race sponsor of this race is actually the tape company. In <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it should be, right? should be. When you look at these uh, couple cars up front right here, they're all taped up in different places, but you know, that's, that's fine. Aero is not very important here. This is more about mechanical grip and getting that race car to turn the center. Orange 82 of Spencer Davis trying to get all the mechanical grip he can underneath of Cabri. Spencer has raced a little modified, raced a little stock cars, and he's got a former modified only owner, Danny Watts Jr., to participate in stock cars. They're not going to run the whole season, but want to do as many k and Pro Series races as they can. If they fix them as well as they did after that first run, might just hang in there. No doubt, and he seems to maybe learn some things in race one, which was a very eventful race for him, but... You know, in race one, we saw making some lunges down the inside that were a little overzealous, a little mm -hmm. bit optimistic at times, and therefore, that's how he got, ended up spinning. That's how he ended up in a couple issues. And now, you see him being a little tidier, giving the drivers a little bit more room, knowing, oh, until I spoke too soon until he gets into Gomes there. <laughs> Apparently not. He hasn't listened. So, uh, yeah, he goes again. <laughs> Rode him up high, and now that's going to open the door for Ankrum in the 17. So, Gomes is going to lose a few spots here. It started when Chase Cabri made a relatively clean pass and then uh, Spencer Davis wormed his way through there in the 82. Ankrum gets a spot. Gomes will have to collect it there as Ronnie Bassett's now in his bumper. It sort of proves my theory that I think that Gomes is struggling a little bit in that car for this race. And Chase Cabri now chasing down the leader, Grant Quinlan. Spencer Davis from Dawsonville, Georgia, driver of number 82, Horton Avenue's Material Canine Pro Series East Car. Been racing the series about three years now, and you know, definitely a Canine experience means a lot, especially for this weekend. Yeah, you know, Danny Watts uh, got this car last year, and uh, I helped build it. You know, it's just a combination between us and him. You know, it's made it's a small team deal between me and one other guy and Danny. You know, it's, it means a lot to go out here and run good. You know, uh, especially compete against these big guys. I'm Spencer Davis, and that's your NASCAR Next Gen Profile. Spencer could be a big guy one of these days. Got to start off the year racing at Daytona in a truck, so a little more Canon Pro Series action and hopefully making his way forward in NASCAR. No doubt. There's a lot of people talking about Spencer. He's part of the Toyota program there at KBM. Has a lot of great teachers around him, so hopefully he can suck in that information and put it to great use. Grant Quinlan has led all the laps so far in race number two. But I'm a little bit concerned about that left front brake rotor glowing. Parker, remember in the first race, there was a red flag, and when they refired the 30 car and moved it, the left front was locked up. And yeah. we found out during break that there was definitely some parts that kind of fused together in the heat there. He's got big glowing brake rotors again. Are you concerned at all? Well, 
No, because I think, you know, what happened there is not a product of what he was doing in the race car. That had to be a faulty part of some type of, of maybe a hub or something along those lines because, you know, these race cars are designed for you to be able to pound the brakes, lap after lap. Those brakes are going to get upwards of 1,500 degrees at times, and that's fine. That's allowed to happen. But, um, you know, it's, I think what he does in the car is not going to cause that problem once again. And we'll see how it works out. Quinlan continues to lead. This is the battle for sixth. Gomes trying to hold off Dipple. And Alfredo right behind them. Here comes that 40 car from the back of the pack. A backup car. He has not raced in it at all. He's now trying to find his way to the front by the end of 100 laps. Derek with more on Alfredo. Keeping up with the progress of Anthony Alfredo in that number 40. He was your fast qualifier for this race. Was slated to start on the pole, but had to go to the rear because he went to a backup car. But we've been watching him. He started off in the 15th position at the crop of the green and is now up to the 8th spot. He's definitely moving forward, but during Derek's report there, Dave, we saw the uh, 55 get hit in the left rear for something new and different. <laughs> what a shock. Marcus Gomes trying to keep it straight while others battle around him. But yeah, Alfredo is, is definitely on the move. And so is this car here, Tyler Ankrum. One race one. See, that car is one of the few cars in this field that doesn't have any damage at all. And once again, he's moving forward as we get closer to halfway in this race. Up to third. Now, Cabri is a few car lengths ahead in the four. And the leader is still Quinlan in the black and 30 car. See the gap back to this battle for sixth. There's Alfredo on the high side. And part of the problem for him, Parker, is if he's a whole lot faster than these guys, there's not a lot of room to race on this track. He's got to find a way by. Exactly. This is the worst part. When you have two cars that are side by side, they're similar speed, and you're so much faster, and you want to just drive around them, but you can't. Oh, wow. Dipple and Alfredo got a little bit together there. Tire to tire contact. We've seen in the first race how that ends up, so you don't want to do that too much. Oh, and Connor Hall gets to the side of him real hard. And that once again, we see a car just basically overdrive that entry and slam into the left side door. That opens the door for Justin Carroll, who finished uh, a very nice second in the opening 100 lapper here. Dipple is finally through now, and Gomes getting the challenge from Alfredo. Looks like he'll probably get by as well. And then Dave, we've actually got someone spinning in two cars up in the wall as these guys are heading down in the same corner of turn three. It's Ryan Vargas, the two car, the five is Juan Manuel Gonzalez. And they have found trouble. No laps in this car for Vargas, the two. He gets it refired. It's a backup car. And back there battling, they got it wrong. He won the backup car lottery for that team. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, there were three drivers in the race tonight for Rev Racing. One backup car. They all had damage. And Ryan's car was the worst out of them. And we already mentioned Garcia's car. A little bit of trouble, a little bit of a ding there on the right front for Gonzalez but it doesn't look too bad. No, we just had a little bit of smoke come out there, so we'll have to look at that one. Top See of your we... screen, going into three. And it looks like... Wow. Yeah. There was another car involved there that gets away. Exactly. And it looked like Ronnie Bassett, perhaps, in the There was a bit four. of sparks early, so one need to believe that maybe someone had a tire issue of some sort or something along those lines. So Gonzalez hits pit road, and Derek is there. The Next Gen Motorsports crew, the number five of Juan Manuel Gonzalez, going to work right now on that car. They've got to take the right front off. They say they have a brake rotor issue in the right front corner of the car. They don't know if they have to change that rotor or not, but if they do, they're going to go a couple of laps down. Now, that'd be disappointing, but better than ending up uh, in a worse situation. We've already seen that happen tonight to a few drivers. So, Gonzalez is on pit road. And Grant Quinlan continues to pace the field in the 30 car. He's definitely had the fastest car here in race one and race two. Was not able to finish race one, but he is showing the strength of that 30 car lap after lap. Just does, no one seems to really have the speed to match him. Not yet, but it's early at South Boston. Back at South Boston Speedway, the cleanup is complete. And after 44 of 100, Grant Quinlan still leads the race in the 30 car. Grant from Ontario grew up about 10 miles from co-car owner Terry Jones and has stayed in touch, a freshman at Windsor uh, University there in Canada. And would like to add a trophy to his resume, Parker. No doubt. and He's had great race restarts and starts in both races, so let's see if he can continue that. Choosing the bottom once again 
We've seen that work out great for him, so we'll see what he gets this time around. Chase Cabry is the four car on the outside. Behind them, Ankrum and Davis. Green is back out at South Boston, and a good jump for Quinlan. Tyler Ankrum there got shoved up out of the groove by Ronnie Bassett Jr. and slammed into the side of Spencer Davis. They're lucky to get away with that. Bassett trying to make up for race one. He actually didn't have a bad finish in race one. It's just he had a whole lot of damage. Yeah, they just had some altercations throughout the race with Tyler Dipple. That really hurt them, but wow, that it, things got very tight on that restart. Oh, and real tight here in the back as Marcus Gomes spins. Connor Hall there in the 31, and uh, Buchanan spins for good measure once again. Hard contact for Connor Hall. And, yep, he picks up the steering wheel, says, ah, what am I supposed to do? Well, I'm not sure he hit hard enough to just quit yet. There he <laughs> so, goes. He puts it back on. All right. <laughs> Team's telling him, no, don't take the wheel off. See what happens. Well, he tried to make a pretty aggressive move down there, and Gomes was there. <laughs> That's just three cars going for the same real estate. You have... The 31 thinks he's inside trying to make a move, and at the same time, the 55 of Marcus Gomes is, is there, and I don't think the 31 really realized it, and they all came together. Narrow racetrack, hard to get around, but if you're a late model stock driver at the South Boston Speedway, you run hundreds of laps here. That certainly is the case in the 75 lapper that took place between the twin 100s here for the K&M Pro Series. Philip Morris was fast in the 0-1, but overheated and had to pull in to the infield. That left the door open for a guy who's won here a lot. Peyton Sellers in the 26 took the checkers again at South Boston. That's a refrain you hear a lot. Peyton is very involved as a racer and as a car owner. Hunt Sellers Racing fielding the 18 car here for Colin Garrett who had a strong third place run in the first race. Great run, and you know, I've got to think it's interesting driving for two drivers, not just one. <laughs> yeah, that's right, a lot of input there. Back with Green Flag Racing at South Boston in a moment. South Boston, Virginia is a great town to grow up in, especially because it's a great racetrack located just outside of town. The sun went down, and they threw the green for race number two with Grant Quinlan leading the early laps in the black number 34, Red Jones Racing. He was leading when this happened. Connor Hall tried to make an aggressive move on the outside of Gomes and on the inside of Carroll. It didn't work out. He ends up in the wall, and they've gotten the car semi-repaired and the track cleaned up. I'm getting ready for another restart with Quinlan still on the inside, Parker. That's been the place to be for him. He's gotten great restarts down there. We've only seen out of two races, one restart where he sort of spun the tires a little bit too much. But other than that, he's been flawless. So I don't see any reason he would change that up right now. Interesting to look at the right side of the four car of Chase Cabry. White walls on that, so he's had a little contact with the paint. Doesn't seem to have affected him, though, and he sticks to the outside of Quinlan. He has. He got a great restart. This is the first time we've really seen Quinlan get challenged from that outside lane. Oh, and Quinlan moves right up, trying to force him out of the groove. We're three wide. That's going to give Ank from the inside. Look, he can't do it. They stay two up front. Oh, and the 30. Uh, boy, the 30 of Quinlan does not look like it's handling well. Certainly can't hold that low line. No, he's definitely loose there. Maybe just has the brake bias turned back a little bit for the long run and didn't turn it back for the restart here to the front. So getting into the corners, he looks very loose, and now he's been forced to the outside by Tyler Ingram. So the lead goes to the 21-year-old from Tampa. Chase Cabry in the four car is out front, and now Quinlan has to deal with Ankrum, and Dipple has to deal with Davis. <laughs> Spencer Davis was laid up in there using uh, Dipple's car maybe basically as a break as he went off into turn three. But it worked. It was effective, and uh, no harm, no foul. Ronnie Bassett Jr. in the 0-4, making his way down in the low side. Dipple has kind of a mid to high groove there. They had a lot of contact in race one. We'll see what kind of a pass he can make here, if he can get by Justin Carroll. Yeah, those two got into each other only, almost too many times. It was just becoming excessive by the end of the race, and maybe they've, they've talked it out and feel like they can race each other a little cleaner this race because they both have fast race cars that look like they could contend up front if they could just get out of his traffic. Wow, he got very loose there. And here comes the 40 of Anthony Alfredo. Started at the back. That is a backup car. He had no laps on it. And now he's going to look to the high side of Carroll to try to get another position. And he's been doing that as we saw him come through the pack. He's been able to kind of do that diamond of a line. You see him off into one, go a little higher as Carroll goes to the apron. And he gets that run off of turn two. And now he'll try to use that same speed 
down into turn three and off of four, getting the run, the momentum of that top line as he's able to do it. So that's really impressive. That is showing the strength of that 40 car Anthony Alfredo. I mean, that's, that's what you want to see as you're coming through the pack. Two lanes available. Anthony just finished up his freshman year at UNC Charlotte. His spotter is a, a, a rising senior there as well, Landon Huffman. And they go to school there together. They race together and seems to be a pretty good combination. I would think that Landon, who has a lot of laps on short tracks, might have been able to help coach him. Anthony's very young to this and coach him on, on the things that you were talking about. No doubt. It's great to have a good relationship with your spotter and especially a relationship where you feel like you can help each other get better. That's always key. Boston. He leads all other active drivers with laps led here. He also had two top ten finishes in this doubleheader event last year, finishing seventh and fourth. Yesterday, they tested here at South Boston, tried to get the car dialed in. He talked to Philip Morris, who's a multi-time late model stock champion here, and the best advice they got from Philip Morris was start off a little bit free. That way, when the sun goes down, the track will tighten up and the car will level off. And that is the common consensus. Great report there by Derek because that's what all these teams are talking about, that this racetrack, for whatever reason, as, the, as, the, as it gets colder, as it goes further in the night, it tightens up. So you basically have to decide how loose you think you can drive your race car at the start of the race to be great at the end of the race. And I think that's why we're seeing a car like the 17th Tyler Ankrum there going past, past Quinlan there because his car is starting to come to him. They started out very loose, and now it's starting to tighten up and come to him as the race goes on. That is four second, Quinlan back to third. And you know what they say about that? Get that first trophy, you want another one? I think that's where Ankrum is right now. Exactly. Well, you know, the first one's the hardest. Because you right. gotta prove yourself you can do it. There's that mental barrier between you and that win, getting past that checkered flag. And then when you've done it, it seems so much easier. At least that's what I've been told. <laughs> We've had a couple checkered flags. Was the second one easier? You know, they were kind of spaced out enough that I felt like both felt first time. <laughs> Alfredo in the 40 car, still mowing him down, gets by the 04 of Ronnie Bassett, working his way toward the front. Anthony Alfredo's family went to short tracks up in Connecticut, in the Connecticut area when he was growing up. Always had the TV on with NASCAR racing, so he was kind of a fan of it and went go-karting for fun with his siblings, but it wasn't really until you know, kind of in his uh, early high school years, kind of looked at his parents and said, you know, my favorite thing to do, even though I play lacrosse and other stuff, is racing. Can we look into this? Good for him, because we need more Connecticut drivers, being <laughs> one myself. Joe Logano, the other. We, we need more of us out there. So kudos out to Alfredo and his family for pursuing this, and he definitely seems to show the speed needed to compete in this series. Got to find a way around a couple of fast cars in front of him now, especially if they're too wide. That's Davis in the orange 82, Dipple in the 54. And we're seeing what we saw just a couple laps earlier out of him where he catches two cars side by side and he seems to just be able to run this little bit higher lane. Oh, he gets the outside there of Tyler Dipple and he's able to really get the momentum off the corner. And it, this is what's so impressive about this 40 car right now is that he is rolling the center on the top better and a lot of these cars are rolling on the bottom. And that's what's allowing him to make these passes. He's cutting through this field at a ferocious pace. I, I think it's only a matter of time before he's knocking on the door of Ankrum up front. Alfredo has experience at this racetrack, may know a little bit about that high line as well, simply from running a late model here, but they do take a little bit different lines. Certainly any confidence you can build at a racetrack is helpful. No doubt. If you have knowledge of a racetrack, it doesn't matter what kind of car is in. It just allows you to, to have that little bit of of expertise and, and a little bit of understanding that this is where the racetrack is going to go. And we talked a little bit earlier about how you have to almost predict what your car is going to do at the end of 100 laps, right? You might have to start oh. out, oh, wow, he gets in the back of Spencer Davis there. But you got to start your car out loose. But how loose? Well, a driver who's been here, who's raced another type of car can say, you know, in most of the races I've done, we start out a five loose, and by the time the race gets done, we're great. And that's what you that knowledge is invaluable. Running in line here, but working Whoa. on each other now. He tried to do the crossover move on Spencer Davis there, but Tyler Dipple had other 
uh, intentions as he was sticking his nose down inside of the 40 of Anthony Alfredo, and the two just got together a little bit, but they were able to get away with it. This is good racing. Back behind the leader, Chase Cabry. These drivers are trying to find a way around each other and then trying to chase down the driver of the four car. Getting down to it at South Boston, just 22 laps remaining in the Hoosier Driver Twin 100 race number two. If your driver is Chase Caber, you've been leading in the four car. If your driver is a 17 of Tyler Ankrum, you're taking a look for the lead. He has. He's gotten the inside here. It looks like his car is just turning through the center a little bit better than Cabri. As you see right there, he's able to hold a tighter line on the bottom and get a run, getting the gas down earlier off the corner. Oh, they're running a little traffic here. Cabri's going to use Buchanan as a pit, maybe, on the exit. Oh, they split them. They make it work. Ankrum goes low, but does not gain any ground on Cabri. And that bought Cabri a little bit of time. I think Ankrum's definitely faster than him, but just getting that little bit of distance might allow him to maybe move his line, maybe change the brake bias inside that car, make an adjustment to try to hold him off. Dipple working by Spencer Davis. That's for fifth. Both those cars pretty beat up here. And <laughs> the, none of the lettering still on their tires at all from race one. They've got some of that body damage in race two. They've knocked the lettering off the tires. But back to the leaders here. This race is great. What you're seeing Tyler Ankrum do, see how he just cuts down the center there. You're able to get a little bit lower than Chase Cabry. That tells me he is definitely turning a little bit better. And it's going to be tough for Chase to hold him off. He's going to have to use everything in his arsenal right now to hold him off. Rear view mirror full of Tyler Ankrum. If you're Chase Cabry, contact in race number one. Your crew went to work, made repairs on your four car. Got it pretty good and been leading a lot of laps. But Ankrum is now going to get side by side in his bid for the lead. And you know right now if Ankrum's this much faster, you've got to find a way to stay ahead of him or impede his progress a little bit. That's why he's holding him so tightly right now as you see Chase Cabry doing everything he can. Oh, is Tyler Ankrum able to clear him, maybe even get a run off here off of two? He's doing, he was doing everything he could to try to make this as hard as possible for Ankrum. Oh! Low line, and he gets into Ankrum. So as he did the crossover, Cabri was not able to hold it. The caution does not come out. So Ankrum spins and rejoins the field. What disaster. Yeah, so I said you had to do everything you could to impede him. I didn't mean exactly spin him out like that, but hey, it worked for him. Uh, very unfortunate for Tyler Ankrum, though. I mean, that's, that's what you don't expect when you're racing the guy cleanly like he did. And then to go off in the next quarter and have him drive right in your left rear, uh, that's just unfortunate. Man, here is a replay. Cabri had just gotten past and was trying to return the favor. Yeah, I mean, we've seen this now in both races. Just for whatever reason, turn three is very inviting to the driver on the inside. They feel like they can lunge a ton of speed into there. But once you get down into the center, it becomes apparent that the outside car is still going to be there when you get there. And the two come together. And, you know, this is... They raced each other so cleanly for a couple laps there. I, I, I hate to see it end like this and, and uh, have Ty Ankrum spin out. Ankrum has fallen back to fifth in the 17 car. Meanwhile, Cabri speeds away two seconds ahead of the 40 car of Anthony Alfredo with 10 laps to go. Is there enough time for Alfredo? I would not think so. I, I think that Cabri probably has this race locked up with a two-second lead, but crazier things have happened, and that 40 has been incredibly fast throughout this race. Cabrian is, is, is in his second year of full-time competition in the K&N Pro Series. Uh, got his ride with Rev Racing through the Drive for Diversity Combine, showed his talents there, and then had a pretty good rookie season last year. Four times finished in the top five, including second at Memphis, was not able to get to victory lane, was very fast here at South Boston. Could this be the night for Chase? It's looking like it. I mean, he's definitely controlled this race in the second half, but you see that 40 car, Anthony Alfredo, seems to be closing in on him. This I'm, could get interesting. I'm saying the gap has shrunk from two seconds. Behind this, the battle for third remains Torrid. The 54 is Dibble, the 30 is Quinlan, and the 17 is Ankrum coming back. Yeah, a little bit of redemption here for the 17 of Tyler Ankrum. He probably had the best car in this race, made the pass when he needed to and seemed to be set up for the win, and now he's having to fight back after getting spun out. But how impressive that he gets spun out. There's no caution. He still finds himself fighting the top five. How do you drivers recover when that happens, Parker? That's one of those things where you just need to literally, as quickly as you can, forget it, clean mm. off the tires, and get back in your rhythm. I mean, it's, it's, well, it's frustrating. It's unfortunate, but you have to get back in your rhythm because these short tracks, the way you make speed is by being consistent and being in that rhythm. And that's what made him so good in race one, so good in this race, and that's what's gotten him back up here. 
It's his teammate he's saying hello to. Now he's going to try the high side, and he's going to make it work. Ankerman is going to get back by for third, coming off of this corner. And there's wow. just five to go now for leader Chase Cabry. How close is Alfredo? He's getting closer. That's just got to be so disappointing for Tyler Ankrum. He's he's hoping for a caution right now. He knows he has the speed in that race car. And we know he's watching the Alfredo go and chase down Chase Cabry right here for the win. And there he thinking is. He could have been there. There he is. And look at the brakes glowing on Cabry. He is driving it as hard as he can. But Alfredo is coming in the 40 car. Man, I've been calling for him to maybe change that brake bias or do something in that car. He had to help it. He knew when he had Tyler Ankrum get to him that he needed to find some speed. He just has not been able to. The 40 is coming right on his tail. Two laps to go. Chase Cabry in the four. Anthony Alfredo in the 40. Now looking to the high side. Can Cabry throw the block? He's definitely the slower car. Here comes oh! Alfredo. Contact coming through the corner. That again, keep it going after it ramming into him. Let's see what happens down the turn one. Will he hit him again? White flag out. One lap remaining down the back stretch, side by side. Oh, they get into each other again. Big contact from Alfredo, and now Cabri is going to go around. Anthony Alfredo will win at South Boston. Wow, what a finish, David. you got to think maybe a little bit of karma for Chase Cabri there after spinning out Tyler Ankrum. And in that same corner on the last lap, he finds himself spinning out out of the lead. The 19-year-old college student from Connecticut, now living in North Carolina, having driven for Junior Motorsports in the late model program, moving up with MDM Racing in the K&M Pro Series, has just banged his way to victory lane. That was an awesome drive. You think he started all the way in the back of the field, worked his way up, came in a backup car he had no laps in, and he showed that speed in race one, caused that big wreck, and what full redemption to come back and win this race. Now, next door to us, NASCAR is reviewing this, Parker. They're trying to make sure this wasn't just a, a dump by yeah. Anthony Alfredo. I, I think they'll see that this is clean. I mean, look, I think the four of Chase Cabry in a lot of ways was trying to force the 40 into a mistake or pinch him down in some respects because as they come down in here, you see the four turns down early there. I mean, that's... I, I think that's just racing. That's hard racing. That's two drivers that desperately want to win this race, that they're doing everything they can coming down to the last corner to stop each other's progress and become the car coming out on top. And unfortunately, the four goes for a spin. Cabri so close to his first win. Here's one more look at it. There's the contact. And then Chase can't maintain control, spins. And Alfredo from the very back of the pack in a race car he has not run. It was a backup after the first race car was destroyed. He's in victory lane, and as you might expect, <laughs> yeah, Cabri is not happy. I know he's got to be upset, but, I mean, I think that's two drivers racing hard. He, he tried to retaliate as well, you know. I, I think that, in a lot of ways, was mano a mano. We'll see what they have to say next. Here we go. k Pro Series Racing on NBCSN is brought to you by... K&N High Flow Air Filters and Air Intake Systems because everyone loves that fast car smell. And we have taken in a whole lot of good racing here tonight at South Boston Speedway. Two very different races, Parker, but contact seemed to be the theme of the night, and that's what Chase Cabry is upset about. He got the last lick and ended up spinning and came across the line 10th as that car went to victory lane. No doubt. I mean, I know Chase is super disappointed because he drove such a great race. Yeah! Well, it is all smiles and emotion down here in victory lane from the back of the pack and the bottom of the stack. Anthony Alfredo coming deep in the field in a backup car, winning your first race here tonight. I need a second to breathe. I didn't breathe for the last 50 laps or so. That was crazy. Oh, man, like, if that doesn't say enough about what this team's capable of, I don't know what does. I never even drove this car before. They just set up a car just, I, heck, it was better in the first one, I think. And we went out there, and I didn't know what to expect with it. I, you know, I was kind of careful in the beginning. I was like, holy cow, this thing's really good. These guys work so hard every week, and, you know, we've had a couple rough races, and I was, you know, it's so hard to put things behind you, especially the way that first race went, but as soon as I put the helmet on, I did, and... You know, we started deep in the field. I didn't know what to expect, honestly, but that top groove really came in for us, and that's where I started making a lot of my passes because it's so hard to pass on the bottom. And, uh, man, this thing was a rocket ship, honestly. I, 
I didn't know if we'd catch the four. When there was 10 to go, he was over straight away in front of me. And I guess a little bit of lap traffic ended us just having a little bit more speed, helped us reel him in. And I moved him a little bit down there, but I had to do it was for the win, especially like how bad these guys, you know, these guys deserve it so bad. I wanted it so bad for them, not just myself. And I got to dedicate this one to my mom because Mother's Day tomorrow, and she's the most incredible woman in the world. So I'm so thankful for her, my dad, uh, all my family, supporters, this whole race team, all my park, uh, marketing partners, Seco Building Systems, JD. RF, uh, Mechanic Shop North, and Oxford Energy Group. This is incredible. With just a handful of laps to go, Chase had a commanding lead. Did you ever think that you would have been able to run him down? I wasn't sure. I mean, the top worked for me passing, but I couldn't, I wasn't much faster up there, so I just went back to trying to work the bottom, and, you know, I felt tight and stuff, and we were struggling a little bit up off, but we still had a ton of speed in the car, so I just kept driving it as hard as I could, and uh, I didn't, I, like you said, I didn't think I could catch him. I thought it, was, it reminded me of Lang last week when Dipple caught me because of caution. So I was banking on a caution. Next thing I know, I just I just kept running hard, never gave up. And uh, my crew chief spotter, they're egging me on. And we ran him down there with uh, coming to the white. So I got inside of him and uh, we were able to make it work. But I, I'm i at a loss of words. It may not seem like it. I just said a lot because I'm so excited. <laughs> but I really just don't even know what to think right now. This is surreal, especially wrecking in the first one, going to a backup and the guys throwing this thing together and us going out there and coming from the back to win this thing in only 100 laps. I, This is awesome. Dave, certainly not a loss for words tonight. Anthony Alfredo and MDM Motorsports break the stronghold that the DGR Crosley team had on Victory Lane in the K&M Pro Series. Now, so good to see and the joy in his voice and the almost like, I can't believe I just did that, Parker. <laughs> well, I want to say he drove his heart out, but it sounds like he maybe drove his lungs out of air there in those last 50 laps. He absolutely put on a clinic in terms of being able to drive through a field cleanly and make passes. Mom is Veronica, by the way. She was down there in Victory Lane celebrating with her son, and she will enjoy that Mother's Day present for sure. Let's go back down to Derek. Well, Tyler Dipple started ninth in that race, comes home in the second spot. Strong points day for you, but the guys in front of you, did you have anything for him? Ah, uh, man, I don't know. We were just, uh, 17 car was quick. He was quick, I think. Uh, I messed up my car first race. I completely took us out of contention there. Uh, made contact with the wall. The car just wasn't the same, and uh, I'm just really frustrated with myself right now. You know, I just, I took us out. We had a really fast race car, and... Uh, I blew it for us, you know, I'm bummed right now, but we came home with a fifth and a second, which is uh, not bad on the stat sheet, you know, not a bad points day, but I'm mad at myself right now because I messed up what could have been a lot better for us. How tough are these twin races to do? Because they're essentially like a double point show. You can gain a lot of points, but also lose them. Yeah, I, I think they're, I think they're dumb, but I mean, that's just, just my opinion. We had a bad night with them tonight, but... I would rather go to 14 racetracks and do 14 separate races than 13, but, you know, that's how it went tonight. You know, it's cool NASCAR's trying to do something different, but I'm not a fan of them. Well, that's the word from the number 54 of Tyler Dipple. He comes home in second tonight. Well, I think the fans enjoyed him, right. Dave. I, you know, I, I don't disagree with them that they're probably tough. They're challenging. It puts a lot of uh, onus on the teams to be able to be prepared for these and the drivers, and if it doesn't go your way, you're definitely going to be frustrated. The Tyler and Tyler Show, now separated by 11 points. Down here on Pit Road with Chase Cabry, led the majority of that race, and of course, contact late in the going, put him around. Anthony Alfredo gets the win, but tell us your side of it. Uh, we, we're letting most of that, and it sucks, because these guys put a lot of hard work in this thing, getting it ready to go in that race, and we got tight towards the end, and Spotter was calling him coming. He was coming. I knew he was going to uh, get there towards the end. I just didn't know he was going to drive 30 car lengths too deep getting into one. Um, and he just killed us getting down in there. And then coming down the back straight away, we doored. And I guess he decided he was going to run the second, third groove getting down in the corner and, and take us out. So uh, it's fine. Uh, I'll put it in the back of my head and remember it and go on to the next one. And when it comes down to that situation again, it'll be the other way around. Timbers and Short Track Racing flaring tonight here at South Boston, guys. Well, I, I struggle with this one because what we saw him do to Tyler Ankrum early in the race. So <laughs> I, I don't think that Alfredo did anything different than he did. Or, or in a lot of ways, Alfredo's was even a little cleaner there towards the end of the race going for a win. And, and I don't think he used too much racetrack in a turn three at all. So our next race promo there, that'll be a West Series race from the Orange Show Speedway. A little smaller than this, and Parker, I can only imagine it will involve some contact as well. I had no doubt in my mind after watching these two races.
So Connor Hall, the 31, was not a good night for him, but the real turning point was late when Chase Cabry got into Tyler Ankrum right there and assumed the lead. What he didn't know was that Anthony Alfredo had a strong 40 car and was coming to the front to take home his first checkered in his first season in the K&M Pro Series. Cabry not happy. Alfredo couldn't be happier. Thanks for joining us on NBCSN for K&M Pro Series Racing from South Boston. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcast.